Okay? What we need to be doing is praying. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Praise God. So we stand to our feet. We're going to worship the Lord.
redemption, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we just want to say thank you for your word this morning, Lord. Lord, it's good to be in your house today, Father. And we're here with open hearts, Lord, to receive everything you want to say to us today. Everything you want to do in our lives, Lord. Speak to us afresh, Lord, we pray through your word this morning. By your Holy Spirit, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As you look onto our television screens, which are working, praise God. <laughs> They weren't earlier on, but the guys sorted it out. You can see some jars of clay, and that is the title of our message this morning, Jars of Clay. And I want to ask you, looking at these jars of clay, would you display them on your mantelpiece? I would, I would things like that. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've actually got a small clay jar. Where from? From Israel, of course that I like to put on display, but Adjana somehow she hides it behind everything else. <laughs> it's out of the way, I mean, I ask for such beauty. <laughs> Obviously, they're not much to look at, are they, these jars of clay? But let me tell you, if you were to have sold your house to buy these claw, these jars claw, claw jars, these jar, claw, jars of clay, oh, we're going to have some fun. <laughs> jars of clay, if you have sold your house to buy these jars of clay when they've been discovered, you would not have been able to afford them. In fact, if we'd have all sold our houses, those that have houses to sell or apartments or whatever you have to sell, to buy these jars of clay when they were first discovered, we would not have been able to afford them. We don't know why. We don't have to guess. It's certainly not down to their attraction, is it? They're not an attractive or beautiful thing, are they? It's what was inside. See, in 1947, around the Dead Sea, around the region of the Dead Sea, a young Arab shepherd boy was out with his flock in the desert. Work that one out. It's for another one, another time. He was in the desert. And he was on, usually, I think they're goats, they go out into the, the desert there, but anyway. Um, he was out this flock, lost one of his sheep or goats, and decided to go looking, as they do, another sermon there, went, went looking, and started to pick up some stones and throwing stones into the cave, because if the sheep or goat was in there, it would have come out frightened. As he did that, he heard something break. I think there were two of them actually, but anyway, they went into the cave, and suddenly they found these jars of clay just sitting there. Wow, can you imagine that? They've been sitting there for 2,000 years. And as they opened up, they found some manuscripts. And those manuscripts were the Dead Sea Scrolls. Wow, which, which is probably the, the most significant archaeological find of, of history for us. And you can see them today in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. You can go to the shrine of the book and visit and see the, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls on display there. Jars of clay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You see, the value wasn't in the actual vessel itself. It was what was inside. And this is what I love about the Lord. Is This is what he does. You see, if I want to put something to, to bring glory to it, you know, I put it on display. I put something majestic, something wonderful on display. I'm sure if I went to your house and I looked on your mantelpiece, I'm sure I'd find some beautiful ornaments and so on. Do we still do that today? <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Right, well, it's not digital yet. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure we'd find some beautiful, you know, ornaments, beautifully painted, wonderful artistic works. In your house, and, you, and that's what you put on display something that's attractive, something that's beautiful, isn't it? But when God puts his treasure on display, he puts it on display in jars of clay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, I just want to establish a foundation for what we're going to say today. I want us to think first and foremost about Jesus. 
And the first thing we learned this morning from our text is the Word of God became flesh. The Word of God became flesh. We know in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Who was the Word? Jesus. Jesus, the Son, the Logos, the Word. And if you go down in John chapter 1 to verse 14, he says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word, the Creator, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we know we've spoken about this, that Israel was awaiting a majestic Messiah. A kingly Messiah who would come and ride in majesty and in glory and overturn their, their oppressors and establish the kingdom. And what they got was a simple Galilee. Yes, he was born in Judea, but he was raised in Nazareth in Galilee. And we learn from John's Gospel that the first disciples, we learn when Philip heard about Jesus, that Philip went and told Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. Philip went and told Nathaniel and he said, look, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. What was Nathaniel's response? Can anything good come from Nazareth? <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth, the Word became flesh, God in the flesh, in the form of Jesus of Nazareth. Interesting. One day Jesus was standing in his own town, his hometown of Nazareth, in the synagogue, and he began to read out from Isaiah chapter 61, and he said today, in, in, the, in, the, in your hearing, this day these words are fulfilled. Words to that effect. What was the response of the people in Nazareth in the synagogue that day? Hey, isn't this Jesus, the son of the, the, the carpenter, the son of Joseph? The Word was standing before them in flesh. Jesus, the Son of God, was manifested in the flesh and they couldn't see it. They didn't realize that God Himself was right there in their midst speaking to them. Why? Because it was in an earthen vessel. A simple earthen vessel. Isaiah 53 verse 2, look what he says. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. There was nothing in his physical appearance that was attractive or distinctive as such. He was just a simple Galilean peasant. And yet the Word had been made flesh. Wow. It goes beyond that because we're told in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10 onwards that He humbled Himself. Yes, the Son of God humbled Himself and that He was found in appearance as a man. And that He humbled Himself even further to the point of death. The death of the cross. The Son of God subjected himself to the death and the shame of the cross. He was hung on that cross at Calvary with two others like a criminal. Like a failed and broken Messiah. Hmm. Listen to some of the cries that were going on around him on that day. He's, if he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. He was scorned and he was ridiculed. Because the word was made flesh. They didn't know what they were doing. I'm asking now, do we not also often miss what God is doing because of our own perspectives, our own expectations? They completely miss it. And we do too sometimes. So with that foundation, let's get into our text, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. 
What is the treasure that he's speaking of? If you go into verse 6, it tells us, For it is the God who commands the light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, friends. This is the treasure. This is the light. It's the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're sitting here today and we just worshipped Jesus. And this is awesome, friends. But do you know there are so many who cannot see the glory of God, the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. There's so many that do not have the knowledge of God. They have a knowledge of God, a certain understanding of God, but they do not contain the knowledge of God. Because God is revealed fully and completely in the person of Jesus Christ. The fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him in bodily form, the Bible tells us in Colossians. Hallelujah. And that's one of the things we've been talking about in our devotion. If you want to know God, look to Jesus. If you want to know that which, which God will say and the way that he responds, the things that grieve him, read the Gospels and look to Jesus. Because Jesus reveals God to us. The Word became flesh. So the first thing that we learn in our text is that God's life is contained in earthen vessels. Weak vessels. Weak vessels. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 to verse 30 says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh Amen. should glory in Amen. His presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see the fact that you're sitting here this morning and you, you have the life and the knowledge of God within you. It's all to the glory of God that it takes somebody from Penn State. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Penn State. Even. Even Brazilians. That he would take people like you and I, and he would place his treasure inside us. I like that jar of clay. Clay, even. <laughs> interesting one. You know, and some of us were, 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 were slimmer jars, and some of us are uh, uh, larger jars, but we're all jars of clay. We contain the treasure. The treasure is the life of God in each one of us, friends. John 17, verse 3, listen to what Jesus said. He says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you. Hallelujah, it's the knowledge of God. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It's the knowledge of the glory of God revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians verse 4, chapter 4, verse 6, we just read it, the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Christ. And if you read in verse chapter 3, you see that there are those who read the law of Moses, and as they read the law of Moses, their hearts are blinded, they're veiled. They're veiled to this truth that we're sitting here and we're celebrating week after week. You know, we've got much to thank God for. It doesn't make much sense, does it? That he would come and just pick somebody from Pensac like me. You know, somebody with a messed up life. And I'm sure many of you as well, you, you can identify with this. Just a messed up life. Just living, living our own lives, doing our own thing, living for different things. You know, chasing after things that do not bring true satisfaction and so on. But thinking, because that's everybody the way everybody lives. Just living to conquer the next thing and the next thing. And then, and then suddenly... That, that knowledge of God, of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ is revealed to us. And it completely transforms us. Hallelujah. The treasure is placed in weak earthen vessels. The second thing that we, we learned this morning, we read from verse 8 through to 12 again. We are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body 
uh, in, in the body, the, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. The second lesson this morning is that God's power is revealed in our weakness. In the weakness of our earthen vessels, friends, God's power is revealed. All the glory belongs to Him. The power belongs to Him. The power to transform a life belongs to Him. Amen. Amen. You know, in the beginning, I, I had this very romantic idea of God's goodness and God's character. You know, in that I thought that because of God's goodness, I would never have to face adversity. I would never go through any types of trials or suffering or things like that. You know, we can, we can arrive at that conclusion. If we, if we listen to some of the stuff that's preached on television as well, you know, you'd think that the, he's a genie in a lamp, almost. I'm about God of the universe. But anyway, I've got this romantic idea. And, and then suddenly what happens is, as you, as you love the Lord and you're worshipping Him, and you're going along with God, and then something happens, something comes out of the blue, we spoke about this recently, you know, that just knocks you for six, doesn't it? And then you suddenly, you don't know, you have a difficulty then in how to reconcile that with God's character, everything that you think that you know about God, everything you've heard on the, the tele-evangelist preaching and so on and so forth, and you just have a difficulty reconciling that, and if we're not careful, we can go into crisis, can't we? And I remember, I have these, I'm speaking from experiences, I have these crises myself. And suddenly everything's going very difficult, you're going through a difficult time, but you're looking heavenward, you're asking yourself, what have I done, Lord? Have I sinned against you? You know, is there something wrong in my life that I need to put right? And I think that's a good attitude to have, by the way, to question. But we read through the scriptures and we see that that's not necessarily the answer. Sometimes we do not know why we're going through what we're going through. But we know that all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense sometimes. Yeah. You don't get any answers and you cry out for the answers and you, 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 you can't work it out. Yeah. But we have to trust him. Yeah. Jesus said, didn't he? He says, in this life you will have, in this world you will have tribulation. We'll take courage. You have good cheer, you know, because I have overcome the world. What he's trying to say is because I've overcome the world, you also can overcome the world. He did it for us. Hallelujah. You know, there's no greater reminder of our frailty than the tribulations of this life. And I want to tell you something. God never promised us freedom from troubles in this life. He didn't. He didn't. And let me just... Let me just quote now. This is the Apostle Paul. If you turn over in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. And Paul here is speaking actually about his ministry. The things that he went through in his ministry. What it cost him to follow Jesus. To be faithful to Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. What does he say? From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes Minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen. In perils of the Gentiles. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren. In weariness and toil. In sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Verse 29. Who is weak? And I'm not weak. Who is made to stumble? And I do not burn with indignation. Verse 30. If I must boast, I will boast in the things which confirm Concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. This was a man acquainted with suffering. He was. If you read through the book of Acts, and you see the price that he had to pay. It's, it's, you know, we need to get back to this understanding, don't we? 
But the Bible tells us, if we go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, it tells us, what does it tell us? It tells us, therefore, we do not lose heart. Despite these things, despite all these troubles, trials, tribulations, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And we've got that strange, that weird, that paradox. You know, that whilst all these things are going on around us, and we, we're human beings, and we suffer, and we struggle with these things. We've got emotions, we've got thoughts. You know, and like I said, you're trying to reconcile that with your faith in God, in a good God. Let me tell you that God is good, regardless of what happens. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. He's good. He's got a good plan and purpose for your life. He has. And we've got to sometime... You know, somehow we're trying to reconcile these the difficulties and the circumstances that we're going through, the trials and the tribulations, where we're feeling weaker and weaker. You know, in yourself, you can feel emotionally, mentally, physically drained with situations. And yet, look what Paul says, even though all that's a reality in our lives, our inward man is being renewed day by day. Oh my goodness me. He uses these things, friends. That's what he's saying. Whatever you're going through, there are times when it permits us to go through things because it has a good purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How does he identify it? Well, he identifies it with the process of Jesus' slow death, doesn't he? He talked about how Jesus, you know, the death of Jesus is working in him. It's almost like he's saying, look, I give myself over constantly to the death of Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be man manifested in me. He sees all these sufferings, trials, tribulations as part of the process, and he almost identifies it with the slow death of Jesus on the cross, the suffering, the torment of Jesus on the cross. Look what he says in Philippians verse, chapter 3, verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. Wow. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So he gets all, he sees all the sufferings, the rejection, the injustice, the hardships. And he sees that as all part of the process of being what he said. What does he say? The fellowship of his sufferings. Wow. Friends, verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. And he's already look, look, look at his attitude. I just want you to look again. But verse 17, I should have read that. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Yeah. Our light affliction. You've just heard me read the things that Paul had to go through, and he refers to it as a light affliction. Why? Because he compares it with the weight of glory that's going to be revealed. Why? Because he has a completely dis different perspective on life. Which is what we also need to have. And that's our third and final lesson this morning. God's perspective is of new creation. God's perspective is of new creation. Hallelujah. You see, the same way as the Apostle Paul here, his, his, his thoughts, his vision were, were fixed. What did he say? We do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are, are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In other words, he got an, an eternal a, a perspective, an eternal perspective about the things that he was going through. Do you know, many years ago, um, we were visiting a friend in, in Brazil, a good friend of Agena's family, uh, Sister Conceição Agena. And Sister Conceição, did you know Agnes? Okay. She, she lived um, close to Agnes' family and she was just as, you know when you meet somebody and they just have such an impact on you? Yeah. Just a sweet natured, gentle, solid Christian, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
a prophetess, a proper, I say that, you know, she was a prophetess. And she would be used to, to exercise demons very often. This woman was a blessing to so many. And suddenly, she developed a very aggressive form of cancer. And I remember, we went to, uh, to, to visit her. Have I spoken about this before? No, I don't know. <clears throat> we went to visit her. And this is the time of woman she was. We visited her in, in some hour. We went into the hospital. We went to pray with her and she started praying for us. <laughs> She started praying, you remember this, she prayed in tongues and started to prophesy over us. This, you know, and, and, and I was like, I said, no, this is ironic, isn't it? We come here to pray with you and you're praying and blessing us. But I remember that I left that hospital and I was so grieved. And I came out and, and I said, Lord, I don't understand. How can a woman like this who served you so faithfully and is such a blessing to so many people be lying in the hospital in this situation? How can that be? And I just remember the Holy Spirit dropped into my heart. I'm not one for visions and dreams. I believe in them, obviously, but I'm, I don't get many nowadays. <laughs> but um, that's going to change in Jesus' name. Yeah. That's going to change. Yeah. Um, hallelujah. But, yeah. So, what's my train with? Well, anyway, suddenly I got this, this vision of, 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 of an ocean. A huge ocean. You know, you look in every direction and all you can see is the sea. And I just saw one drop, one drop of rain drop into that ocean. And this this verse came to heart, came to mind. What does he say? Verse 17. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far, far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And I felt the Holy Spirit. Drop this in my heart. But for me, I was looking from my earthly perspective at a woman who had been suffering for weeks. But from the eternal perspective, it was a light affliction. It was like a drop in the ocean compared to the glory that was going to be revealed in our life, compared to the eternity. Friends, that's what we need to have an eternal perspective, isn't it? Hallelujah. What's his response to that? We need to see things not as things are, but as things will be. Not as we are, but as we will be. And so often we can be so focused on the jar, can't we? We can be so focused looking at the earthen vessel and all the frailty and weakness of the earthen vessel and all the faults and defects in the earthen vessel and we forget to look to the treasure that was, that's within. Because the earthen vessel is temporary, but the treasure within is eternal. So we need to have that eternal perspective. Oh my goodness, if, could, if the Lord could just tear that veil from our eyes and allow us to see what is within us, each one of us. You know, it's, this is not, we're not standing here trying to make you feel good today. This isn't a sort of self-esteem sermon, you know, a motivational sermon. This is the truth of the scriptures. This is the truth of the scriptures. This is the treasure that is inside each one of you. Hallelujah. There will come a day when that treasure is revealed fully, friends. The whole of creation is waiting for that day, friends. Praise God for that. How does Paul respond to that? I'm going to finish shortly. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Look what he says. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. In other words, we look beyond the vessel, we look to the treasure. We look from the outside, from the external, we don't focus on that, we look to the treasure yeah. within. And that's why he says, if you read it there in verse 17, he goes on to say, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. That's God's perspective. That's God's perspective on things. God's perspective is new creation. He doesn't yeah. just see where you are today, he sees what you will be. Yeah. Hallelujah. He knows what he's doing, he knows what he's working in us and through us. If we focus on the imperfections of the vessel, we'll lose sight of what God is doing. We'll lose sight of the treasure. Hallelujah. Where is our focus? 
Where is your focus? Where's my focus? What are we focused on? The outward, the external, the temporary, or that which was inside? If our perspective is wrong, we will only focus on the weakness of the vessel rather than the glory of the light within. And what happens is, what we start to do then is we start to sow and, and speak into and sow into our imperfections, don't we? We start to see them more. We start to, to, to draw our conclusions of all the reasons why I'm not a good Christian. And please, friends, this, I'm not saying, not encouraging denial. We've got to, of course, when we get it wrong, we need to confess it before the Lord and so on. What I'm saying is that we need to be more focused on that which is inside, that which God is doing within us. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a glorious future for you. Amen. Glorious future. Those well beyond this life. We're only here for what, 17 right. years? Yeah. Maybe a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Four and ten. Anyway, <laughs> we're only a short time, aren't we? We're passing through a pilgrims in this earth, but some of us will be like we, we think and, and live like we belong here forever. Right, yeah. We're passing through this life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Amen. Definitely. Conclusion to finish today. Number one, we carry the life of God within us. You carry the life of God within you. Hallelujah. It's the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ that many can't see. Secondly, the power to transform us is His and not ours. It's not ours. He can take an earthen vessel and His power is, is revealed in our weakness. It is. Thirdly, we must learn to see as He sees. Amen. Let's have a change of perspective. Let's start to read the scriptures and believe they're not just speaking about believers 2,000 years ago, but they're speaking about us. These are realities for us in the year 2021. Yeah. Amen? When you're reading this and you're reading that if anyone is in Christ Jesus a new creation, he's speaking about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, as you say, the old has passed, all things, behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us. You've been reconciled to God. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ. Not imputing their trespass, trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of re reconciliation. In other words, as we, we have been reconciled, we need to spread that word of reconciliation. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we glorify you. We honor you. We worship you. We thank you, Lord, that you, Lord, you would place this treasure in earthen vessels like us, Lord. Lord, we're not worthy of it. But Lord, you love us. And Lord, we can't do anything about ourselves, Father, but you can. Lord, it's your, your power that transforms us, Father God, into something glorious. It's you that gives us hope for the future, Lord. It's you that gives us that perspective, Father, of eternity in the light of the, the afflictions, the difficulties, the tribulations that we go through in this life. Lord, give us strength. Lord, and help us to, to keep focus and have the right perspective. Father, we glorify you today. We glorify you today. All the glory belongs to you, Lord, because your treasure is in earthen vessels. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we worship God? Amen. Amen. Okay. Do we stand?
enjoys the lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bring it on. Praise God. So, nobody's born this, but now this is a little dance. <laughs>
And so if you want to join us for that, that's next Saturday morning, um, half past 10 to about half past 11. Um, but those who are in the team will be meeting earlier to pray with each other and just ask the Holy Spirit, because without the Holy Spirit, we may as well just stay home. Yeah? But I believe God's going to move as the ground has been sowed and sowed and sowed over years. Um, not just when we've been out, but many before us. Surely it is time for us to see a harvest and to start seeing people come on a Sunday morning singing these songs for the first time. You know, I'm like, I've sang these ideas of Elijah for 30 odd years, God. Surely now is the day. Now is the time. Amen. So join us if you can. If you can't join us, please pray. Please be praying. Amen. In Jesus' name. Okay, okay, praise God. Um, the next notice is, is not as, well it is, it's, it is joyful, but it's a bit of sad news as well. Um, Betty White, yeah. remember Auntie Betty? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we used to call it, it's called Auntie Betty. So Auntie Betty went home to be with the Lord yeah. on Tuesday. I think everybody, pretty much everybody is uh, aware of that. Um, she, she slipped away in her in her peace, in her sleep, praise God. And she was 93 years old. So bless the Lord for that. I had some fun and laughter with her many years ago. I'm sure you did as well. Um, but we're waiting for the, the details about the funeral. I've been asked to take the funeral. And I've also asked if there are one or two people in the congregation who have any funny memories or anything that you'd like to, to come and share as well so you can participate. So I'll be passing on the details, and we'll be passing on the details as soon as we have them. But if you do, if you can think of something and you, you're willing to do that, please come and see us. Okay? Come and tell us, and uh, it'll be great, obviously. I, I, I don't know about restrictions for funerals now, but we changed them. They, they have been lifted, so there, there are more. As many as. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, we're not sure where, where it's going to be at yet. Alright? So we'll let you know as soon as possible. But praise God. You know, she's fought the good fight. She's won the prize. She's in the presence of the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. And we'll see her again. Julia, you have your surgery coming up, don't you? Yeah, it's a week on Thursday. A week on Thursday, but there's a chance she might not be with us next Sunday. So I thought it would be good for us to pray with Julia as she goes in. Amen. Praise God. So if you want to just. Extend your hands towards Julia. Social distance prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we just say thank you for our sister Julia. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We know she's been waiting for so long, Father God. It's been a frustrating time, but all this door is open now. And Lord, we just pray that your hand will be upon her, Father, from start to finish, Lord. That this, this surgery will be a success, Father God. Lord, Lord, we just pray you will bless those who will carry out the surgery, Father. And there will be no complications whatsoever, Lord. And the results will be to the glory of your name. Father, in Jesus' name, we look forward to the good report. Hallelujah. Amen. Father God. And fill us, Lord, with the joy of the Lord again, we yes. pray. 
honor you. We want to glorify your name. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. 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 Have a blessed day, have a blessed week, and I'll see you tonight on Zoom. Amen.